Carolina Panthers and Matt Rule have done a lot of things wrong in the past couple of years. The 2022 draft was not one of them. They got this right. They hit about as often as they could have on these picks uh, before, we've, before we've seen the play granted. But, hey, you know, I, I want to do a video on all these teams. I want to talk about these draft classes. And I get some people be like, ah, we haven't really seen the play yet. It's too early to really give grades, too early to project for these players. But you know what? Get over it. And click on a different video then. I mean, I don't ruin my fun. So, right off the bat, Carolina 6 overall. I can make Wanu from NC State. Versatile offense tackle, can play left tackle, can play guard for you. The Carolina Panthers have had a different starting left tackle every year since Jordan Gross retired at the end of the 2013 season. It's been almost a decade now. Uh, they've been rotating through offensive linemen left and right. And Iguana finally gives you a chance to have some stability at left tackle. So I really do like this pick, especially considering we only saw one quarterback go in the first round, and a lot of teams didn't have a first-round grade on Kenny Pickett. So... The fact that this was such a bad quarterback class, taking the first style product, Iguana, who at the very least is going to be an above average guard for you, at the very best will be a Pro Bowl left tackle, I would say. That's probably the best for him. Hey, I think that's a win. Uh, then you got Matt Corral in the third round. You traded up to get him at 94th overall. I had him ranked 71st on my big board. So that's a good value pickup, not just because he's a quarterback, but also because, you know, the ranking proved it. The ranking. Makes him a value pickup. And he could develop into something because you never know with Sam Darnold as your starting quarterback. All other options might be preferable. And I think Matt Corral could see playing time before the end of his rookie season, especially when Matt Rule's seat gets scorching hot towards the end of the year when you've only won two or three games. Because you're not going to win many games this year. Brandon Smith at linebacker from Penn State. The guy... He's a supreme athlete, like maybe the best athlete in this entire draft class. And that's saying something because there are a lot of really good athletes this year, including guys like Jordan Davis, Travis Jones, who are just massive human beings as interior defensive linemen who run like crazy. Uh, but Brand Smith is overall probably the most complete athlete in this draft class from a size perspective, from a speed perspective, from an agility perspective, from a strength perspective. He is that dude. So getting him at, in the fourth round at 120th overall, in my opinion, was a very good selection. The concerns with him are going to be more along the mental side of the game. And I'm saying that because he really doesn't diagnose plays that well. He kind of gets caught up on fakes sometimes. He takes false steps. There's a lot of things he just has not learned throughout his time in Penn State or just has not picked up on so far. And if you can just ingrain those practices into him, then you're, you're looking at a guy who's got an all-pro ceiling based on his supreme athleticism. And frankly, he's got the length and speed to probably work well in zone coverages. Would I put him in a man? Probably not. But overall, a very potentially complete player here. The issue has been that he just has not put together the more refined parts of the game so far. And you would expect that for a guy taking in the fourth round. So I think overall, this is a very good project to take a flyer on. Because Brandon Smith, like I said, just based purely on his physical capabilities, he has an all-pro ceiling. Amari Barno, edge from Virginia in the sixth round. I had him at 134th overall on my board. He went 189th in the draft. It's a really good pickup. Barno is going to be more of a, I won't say linebacker edge hybrid, but he has played a little bit of linebacker in the past. I think he's more of a pure edge now. Maybe not someone you like as a base end because he's a little bit smaller than that. But he's got really good speed uh, for a guy his size. And I think based on his production at Virginia, which is sometimes up and down a little bit, he is a developmental guy. He's a rotational pass rusher, in my opinion. But someone you can count on to con produce consistently over the course of a year or so. Uh, Cade Mays, interior offensive lineman from Tennessee. He's got experience in playing all five positions along the line, or maybe just four positions and not center. I don't really like him as a long-term star. That being said, you get a backup player who can play almost every position along the line in the sixth round, 199th overall. Go for it. <laughs> That's a pretty good pickup. And then Kalam, uh, Kalam Barn, Kalam Barnes, Kalen Barnes from Baylor. I don't know why I had trouble with that name. He was the guy who ran the fastest 40 time recorded by a cornerback in combine history this past year. Official time, I should say. Uh, you get him at 242nd overall. And you just get a speed demon. Might just be a special teams guy throughout his entire career. But you know what? In seventh round, why not just take a shot on a guy who's got some really good speed numbers? So Barnes is the pick there. And again, I'm not a guy who I project to really contribute much as a rookie. But hey, you never know with injuries, you never know with depth charts. Uh, you don't have stuff on Gilmore this year. So some things, some adjustments may be made for Carolina. They're going to be trying to pick some guys out. I gave Carolina a B-plus in this draft. And frankly, the more I look at it, I think you can make the argument it serves an A.